joined by the one and only Brick Suit, who uh, we just, I mean, of course, we're friends, and I, yes. I follow you on social media. Let's talk about this uh, thing that happened to you at the airport. I mean, you were kind of stranded in uh, San Diego, I guess. Yeah, I was planning, I like to get to rallies early, and my plan was to get here Thursday morning. So I had an overnight flight booked on Delta out of San Diego, and I, same flight, you know, Delta Sky Miles, same thing, same credit card, same email address, same phone number, same everything, right? So I'm booked, and they're sending me all the normal emails, your flight's here, you're confirmed. I get down to the airport, put in my credit card, it will not print me a boarding pass. You need to see an agent. Agent. Right, or see a gate agent, yeah, to confirm your ID. So I go to see the gate agent, and not the gate, but the ticketing counter, and um, it took them 40 minutes to figure out that I was on Delta's internal no-fly list. Not, not a TSA no-fly, but Delta Airlines no-fly list. And you had no previous knowledge of that at all? Never sent you an email? Never called you to say a letter in the mail? Nothing? No, I searched my emails. There was nothing from them at all. No, no communication I knew about. And, of course, you, you, you tactfully explained this on social media. And you said, look, I'm not blaming anybody at the Delta counter. Matter of fact, you said they were actually kind of cooperative wanting to find out what went wrong. Well. They were very helpful. The, the employees were very nice. And the people I spoke with on the phone were very nice, too. It's just that there was no department open that could tell you what actually happened there was nobody that could overrule it so you know i understand that it's not their fault i'm not going to be angry with them at all i mean they were they were all very good all right so but you made it here uh, a little bit later than expected but you're here so let's talk about uh the reaction that you're getting i mean I, this is the first time i've been at this particular venue i don't know about, about you at this venue yes but i did host a rally for rsbn at uh, just up the way at abaca at the airport in uh in the 2020 season so so it's not the first time in this area. And, of course, Montoursville is close by. I've been to two rallies there. So let's talk a little bit about the FBI. We had Marjorie Taylor Greene earlier talking about the raid and how it really is unjustifiable. And, and, the, and the evidence they had to do it, it does not add up. When you saw the news break, what was going through your mind? Made up stuff. Just persecution. A ridiculous baloney. I mean, when I saw that they were doing a raid of that. I mean, I, you know, I know that the president can declassify anything. It's not classified if he takes it. It's declassified. By virtue of him declassifying it, it's already, it's okay. So, you know, I was just concerned when I read that there were none of Trump's lawyers that were able to be present. I think we need to be wonder about this. None of his legal advisors were able to be present when they were searching the premises. That just introduces the possibility of fraud. I mean, his advisors, his observers should be able to be there. And the, the terms of the, of the search warrant when that came out, overbroad. I think they even sent it through a Chinese app or something like that. Yeah, and, also, and also the request to turn off the surveillance videos inside just kind of smells foul as well. Because if you've got nothing to hide, and then why why would you be requested to turn that off? But yeah, so much uncertainty right now. Let's go to Biden's speech the other night. What did okay. you think about? Let's talk about the optics. Forget about what he said. Okay. Perhaps you didn't watch the speech, but you saw the pictures. Uh, what's your thoughts on the optics? The optics are incredibly horrible. I am loving all of the memes, and all of you out there making memes, keep them coming. Put Stalin head on his body. Put Hitler head on his body. I mean, he, he looked like a dictator. He looked more like a dictator than dictators look like dictators. Yeah. I mean, he redefined dictator look 2020 as Joe Biden in front of a red backdrop. And the thing that bugged me the most, Brian, he's got the Marines standing behind him. Joe Biden is the guy who left the Marines behind in Afghanistan, and now he's got the balls to put Marines behind him and say, I'm the guy for the military. Yeah, you know, and if you, it's, not, it, it's not right. It's not right, and I can promise you that the White House has spent a ton of money with consultants making sure they got everything. It looked like a movie set from Star Wars, to be honest with you. It had that Death Star look to it, uh, which is exactly what the Biden regime is doing right now. They're killing America. Uh, but this was done on purpose. And I think this does foreshadow uh, what is to come, because we still got a couple more years left of President Biden. Unfortunately, we do. Um, and, you know, they also did the Hollywood production values for all those show trials, the J6 stuff. But we may have two more years of Joe Biden. But if we get Dr. Oz in the Senate and if we take back the House nationwide, that's not going to matter because we'll control the agenda. The Senate race here in Pennsylvania is incredibly important, especially as part of the national picture. Not only is Fetterman just basically a communist, and, and I honestly, on a, 
I don't know if he can handle six years in office. He doesn't look like a healthy individual to me. I, I wish him well. I, I don't wish ill health upon him, but he's not exactly the picture of somebody I'm saying willing to trust six years in office. But if we can get the Senate and we can control the uh, these the heads of the Senate committees and the you know, committee chairman and the agenda there, we're going to do a long ways of being able to mitigate some of the disaster that Biden would force on us. And that's why Dr. Oz is such a critical, critical component of that. All right, if you want to follow Brick Suit on social media, it's fun to watch. And uh, you haven't done one of your airport memes in a while. Maybe you're due for one of those. But how can people follow you? Uh, on Twitter, I'm at Brick underscore suit. And on Instagram, just regular Brick Suit. And, you know, also I just want to say Doug Mastriano for governor, incredibly important, not just for Pennsylvania, but... He's going to do great in terms of getting elections back to where they should be in Pennsylvania. And that'll be a great example for all the other states who have election laws they want changed as well. Is this a, the original suit or is this a, a, a replacement? Because they're looking uh, pretty fresh right you now. You know, I, I've lost a few pounds. This is Brick Suit 2.0. 2.0 in the Brick you know, Suit I, there. I've dropped, uh, you know, a few pounds since looking good. the last time. So. You got the mustache working too. Yeah. There you go. All right, Brian, good Brick to see you again. Thank, Good seeing you. I know the crowd favorite here, Liz, and everyone loves uh, the Brick Suit uh, here in Pennsylvania. And, of course, uh, you know, why wouldn't they love the brick suit? Because he has been a staple. Not only does President Trump call him out almost every time they see him on the front row, but the people here, they love brick suit as well. Absolutely.